one. Hello, everyone, and welcome. We are here to, I'm Jamin Chively, and Guy? Uh, I'm Ye, Ye Tao, at uh, Roland Institute at Harvard. I'm Guy McPherson, Professor Emeritus at the University of Arizona, currently living in a suburb of Orlando, Florida. Awesome. And I'm co-founder and president of Radish.org, and the three of us will be presenting concurrently on a week from today, Friday, February 14th, Valentine's Day, starting at 10 o'clock in the morning Eastern time, 7 a.m. Pacific time and other time zones around the world. Uh, and we will be meeting for two hours from 10 a.m. Eastern to 12 noon Eastern to talk about one, the problem of abrupt climate change, and number two, the solution to abrupt climate change. Guy, would you like to share anything about the problem? Sure, the problem, which I tend to call a predicament because I don't see a way out. The problem is that we are overheating the earth through industrial activity. In addition, we are currently at the highest global average temperature experienced by Homo sapiens during our 315,000 year stay so far on earth. And I call it a predicament because I don't see a way out. I, I, I've identified more than a handful of different ways we can continue to overheat the planet. But until I started having conversations with engineers such as the two of you, I hadn't come across ideas for how we might level off the temperature at its current state or reduce the temperature by somehow cooling the earth. So this is the, we'll call it the last ditch plan to save humanity or maybe the last ditch plan to save Homo sapiens, because I'm not sure there's a lot of humanity in a whole bunch of the individual members of Homo sapiens. <laughs> no. Totally, totally. All right, well, you, you mentioned uh, Dr. Ye Tao at Harvard. Uh, Ye, you have come up with a brilliant solution, which Guy and I are super excited about, and we want the world to hear about, so that we can all talk about it and analyze it. Ye, would you be good enough to share with us about your Yeah, yeah certainly, I think the, uh, one major challenge of this whole thing is the scale of the problem, right? It's a planetary. And um, we have all these wonderful technologies. We can do wonderful things with our cell phones and making um, devices with atomic resolution and precision. Um, that's all possible using, you know, a few pieces of top-notch equipment and with our best scientists. But the problem with the climate change is that it's happening on the whole of Earth. and um, the fancy stuff that we have just won't work because we don't have enough of them and they're often too expensive to make. So the reali uh, realization that led to uh, finding a solution that will be disgusting is that um, we are really uh, limited to working with some of the most abundant stuff that we have. So let me just uh, share a, a quick slide to illustrate the uh, idea. So basically on Earth, we have an abundance of sunlight, like sands and seawater and air. So these are uh, stuff that we essentially have uh, close to, uh, you know, um, unlimited amount access to uh, these materials. And any uh, solution to a planetary scale problem has to um, leverage uh, material that we have at this quantity. So uh, in the conversation, we'll be discussing how we can um, use these very abundant uh, matter uh, in order to basically diffuse bombs caused by our CO2 emissions. So uh, this picture basically illustrates the volume of one ton of CO2 at uh, standard uh, pressure and temperature, and uh, each of us in the United States emit this much every three weeks. So it's a huge amount. Mm. And uh, we'll be discussing how, for example, we can uh, neutralize uh, this bomb at the cost of uh, not more than ten dollars uh, and permanently um, using those cheap materials like sand, sunlight, air, and seawater. So um, we'll have the pleasure to introduce uh, an engineering framework based on these materials and, uh, for example, arrays of floating mirrors and many other um, uh, ideas and infrastructures based on uh, this glass and 
uh, affordable technologies. So I will just stop there to uh, uh, let Jamin uh, take over. Beautiful. I, I love it. It's brilliant, yay. And, you know, I had been toying with ideas of like mirrors in the deserts, for example, uh, but there's a lot of complications with that. Uh, uh, not, not the least of which is there are thriving ecosystems, even in very dry deserts, that putting huge arrays of mirrors there would, would disrupt. But in the oceans, um, yes, it, it might, it's definitely going to be a new thing to have these vast arrays of floating mirrors in certain parts of the oceans. But one of the things I love about your uh, schema there is that you space out the mirrors, you make them round, so if a whale or a fish bumps into it, it's not going to cut its head off. And um, also, the main thing is we're going to be doing the oceans and all sea life a huge favor by cooling them down. They need relief as much yes. as we do, as yes. much as any organism does. So, yay, A+, plus, I'm with you. Now, Guy, I'd love to hear Guy's thoughts because, you know, for, for quite a while he was saying, hey, th there is no solution that I see. Guy, when you see yay's solution, what, 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 what goes through your mind? Well, we've been talking about this for several months now, and it's among the most promising several months I've experienced in the last many years. So, of course, I continue to seek solutions wherever they can be found. I'm no fan of our species going extinct, much less the many others we're driving to extinction as a result of overheating the planet. So, yes, I think this is great. And... We'll see where it goes, you know, as long as is it's not viewed as a magic bullet so that nobody has to change their behavior. As long as it's not viewed as, a, as just one more drink at the party and to keep the party going for another five minutes, I think that's great. So we'll see. And it's, you know, I've indicated many times that this is important enough to take action on, and that's why I'm involved because I think it has a chance at succeeding, or I wouldn't be involved. I would be conducting my life as I encourage other people to do, which is to seek joy wherever they can find it. Beautiful. So, great stuff. Beautiful. Well, it certainly gives me joy to be collaborating with both of you and working on such important projects. And I also want to point out and invite everyone to join us, not just to watch what we're gonna be presenting. You can certainly do that if you want. You can just sit back and watch for that two hour period that we'll be talking about all this. But for the first time in this case, you will actually be able to click on a link and literally be one of us in this same video conference room. And you'll be able to converse with us and ask questions and comments and challenges and what about this and what about that. Because for the collective intelligence block party, as the name suggests, this is all about all of us bringing together our collective intelligence. Each of us, each of the three of us has a whole bunch of different perspectives and education and life experience and everything. So we bring a lot to the table, but there's no comparison between the three of us and mm -hmm. a substantial chunk of humanity coming together and mm -hmm. collaborating on this. Mm -hmm. yep. So. I mean, for organizing the uh, the platform, I guess uh, um, if we can uh, pull everybody's resources, the addition, the sum has to be greater than the individual parts. So I look forward to how um, the platform, uh, you know, helps to solve our most urgent problems. And I think during the process, whether we can implement uh, this engineering intervention will be a test of the, the character of humanity and whether we even deserve to be to persist on this planet, on this beautiful planet. Totally, totally, totally. You know, and the way I see it, and this gets to what Guy was commenting on, is, you know, we don't want this to be just yet another drink at the party. Here's how I see it. If, because it's still an open question, if we're able to muster humanity's resources and enough of us come together and actually make this happen, what I predict is that will give humanity a huge boost in self-confidence as a species, because when this happens, now I'm gonna go from if to when, when we've got vast arrays of mirrors all over the oceans, people who are just hearing about it for the first time are gonna say, well, that's phenomenal. How did this come to pass? And the answer will be, humanity came together as a collective. And they'll say, well, wait a second, well, shoot, if we can do that, if we can cool the planet, 
solve arguably our biggest, most urgent problem, what else can we do with collective intelligence? And so I think it'll be a springboard for a whole new golden age of humanity solving myriad problems and addressing myriad untapped opportunities. So I really see it as the key turning point, both to saving life on earth and also transforming humanity into a new modality of cooperation, collaboration, and collective intelligence. Mm -hmm. So the stakes could not be higher. So please put on your calendar from 10 a.m. to 12 noon Eastern time, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific time and other time zones as appropriate. Please mark your calendar. Please be prepared to join us and it's up to you. You can either sit back and watch and listen or you can actually jump in to the video conference room with us, which will be on Zoom. The link will be on the homepage of radish.org. You simply click on the link and join and you're in with us. Try it out. We don't bite. I don't bite. Guy, do you bite? I don't think so. Not that I'm talking about on here. All right, beautiful. Well, I'm super excited and super grateful to you both and super, to great, super grateful to everyone who will be joining us. Uh, any final words or other, other things you guys would like to discuss while we're here? Now is the time. Yeah. You, can, you can be involved if you'd like. And now is the time. It's the most important time in human history. Yeah. Get busy. Let's do it. All right, we'll see you all 10 a.m. Eastern time, Friday, February 14th. We'll see you there. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Guy. Thank you, Yay. Thank you.